This week on Profile. What's a typical day for you? And I am not a morning person. I'm a night person. So I don't usually go to bed to 1 or 1.30. Um, so, and I don't get home generally till about 8. I think I should have gotten over it. Um, so if I do not have court, I probably don't get to the office till between 9 and 9.30. And I'll use that, that, that time from 7.30 to 8.30 or so to, to work out. If I have court, then it's just up. Uh, one of the great things about my office is, and where we live, I can be in my office 11 minutes after I pull out of my drive. We're not going that way now because of what's happening on Kirby. But, so I have it down to a science. Hey, uh, Linda, Tissy called. Is that about this, you think? What are some of your other hobbies and, and passions? You know, um, I'm kind of hobbyless, really. I used to love to play golf, but I, I haven't played much golf in years and years. And uh, we, I quit playing golf, really, when we had small children. And I've just never really seriously gone back to it. I used to love it, but you know, my work is a hobby in a lot of ways. I, I don't consider it work, so I don't consider it something I want to get away from. I have no real interest or desire in getting away from it. So getting me to leave it alone has always been just kind of impossible. And that was true even when I was in the district attorney's office, because I was there for over 15 years. So I was 49. I worked for the government all my life until I was 49 in one capacity or the other. Linda, I'm going to I'm going to head on down in just a minute. Okay, good. And at what point after working for the government for for that long a period of time did you say, "Okay, it's it's time to strike out on my own." What what helped you make that decision? Oh, I, th there was probably a management philosophy difference of opinion in the district attorney's office as to how I thought I would like to do things, and it wasn't my office. I wasn't the district attorney, and uh, I liked very much the guy who was, so I wasn't going to try to run against him or anything. And uh, it was just time for it to be my office or to move on, and it wasn't my office and it wasn't going to be anywhere in the near future. So it was just, it was time to leave. I didn't leave for the money. If the money had been the issue, I'd have left a long time before. Um, but I just thought that there was a time in my life where I ought to try do it my do it the way I wanted. I'd always worked for somebody else. I'd never I'd, I'd always had a uh, a job uh, working for others, and I decided that I would just see uh, what it was like to to do it on my own. So th there wasn't any great all of a, all of a sudden. In, incredible decision that occurred. It was just probably time. When you first struck out on your own after such a long period of time and working, working for others, how big of a change is that? Because I would imagine you're not only an attorney well, it's, at a that point. it's a tremendous change. First of all, I was 49. I'd never run a business. I'd never had overhead. I'd never had to meet a payroll. I'd always been salaried, and my salary was guaranteed by others. And I'd never represented anybody, and I'd never quoted a fee, and I'd never had to figure out how to make a living to support others as well as myself, other than just go to work and do the best I could and collect a paycheck. So <laughs> I remember the first client that came in, I didn't even know what to charge her. She'd been a juror in one of my cases when I was a prosecutor, and she had a problem. But I, <laughs> and somebody got time to tell her how much it would cost to try to help her, I had no idea. So I just made up a figure, and, and it was acceptable to her, but it, it was a trial and error type deal. So uh, it was a heck of a job. And it really took me about two and a half years uh, to quit missing being a prosecutor. I loved being a prosecutor. I loved the DA's office and all that, so it took me a while. So. Now, did you have any particular mentors or, or people that helped guide you in that transition or when you were first getting started? No. 
I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and you know, that's the stage of life where you, you go from feeling pretty comfortable with what you're doing, because uh, you'd been doing it for over 15 years, mm -hmm. to having absolutely no idea. So I've always been a perennial optimist, so I just assumed it would work out. But I sure didn't know what I was doing. Now, why did you get your start late? Take, take me uh, what led up to, to getting out of law school Oh, it's a very checkered career. I flunked out of college. So that means when and then I went back to the same school. So then when I graduated, I graduated a year later than I was supposed to. Um, and then I taught school for a year. Then I went into the Army for five years during Vietnam. And then uh, I worked for a congressman for a year in Washington while I was applying to law school. So all of those things meant. I think I turned 31 in October after I started law school in September. Okay. You know, so it was almost 31. But. So you taught, you taught school. What attracted you to teaching? Oh, I loved to teach. I still love teaching. Uh, when I was in the district attorney's office, one of the jobs I had for about 12 years there was to be in charge of training in addition to trying cases. Uh, it's just, young people are fun, whether they're seventh graders, ninth graders, twelfth graders, which all three I taught, mm -hmm. or whether they're uh, young lawyers. Where are you going? Uh, 13. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? We were in the case a Rusty long Hardy. time ago. Yeah. A long time ago in federal court. How long ago? <laughs> Longer than that. Longer than any one of us. I just talked to a guy downstairs that was his, uh, in his 40th year of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky man to be still alive. That's right. See, good to see you. Take care. So there we how go. does that make you feel when other attorneys come up to you and they introduce themselves and they remember cases against you and you've obviously oh, I like this. It. You have to understand. I love, I love what I do. And so I always like that. I take that as a, as a tremendous compliment. What do you think has made you so successful? Do you have a certain philosophy that you, that you practice by? All of this stuff of people coming up to say hello or, or, or sometimes recognizing and stopping and so, I still don't quite, I'm, I still don't quite accept it in the sense that I don't expect it and I'm still sometimes surprised by it. I don't think of myself as that successful. I still think of myself basically as an assistant DA trying auto theft cases. Uh, I, uh, I'm always flattered when somebody comes up and says hello or has something to say. So I, I'm not totally willing to concede that so successful thing. Uh, 